This is the Manga Xanadu Manga Dome Podcast. I am your host, Laurie Henderson. Join me on this journey into the world of manga, where a river of reviews flow through caverns of commentary down into the latest news. Welcome to the Manga Dome. Vertical Goes Digital Vertical Inc., a small manga publisher who has been resisting the tide to go digital, has finally caved with the debut of three of their backlog titles on Amazon. Seven Billion Needles, Twin Spica, and The Drops of God are now available with the first two volumes of each series. This is an awesome change of direction, especially with Twin Spica. That was a great series that sadly didn't sell as well as it should have. It's about a girl's dream to become an astronaut. I love the series and was saddened when it was announced that it was going out of print. This is a great opportunity to keep this series alive. If you haven't read it, I would highly recommend it. I would also highly recommend Seven Billion Needles. It's a great sci-fi title and only four volumes long. It's a story about discovering oneself and learning to reconnect with the world. It is fantastic and a must-read for any sci-fi fans or anyone just interested. The Drops of God, which is about wine, can be a little hard to get into, but it is totally worth it. The passion the protagonist and antagonist have for wine is contagious, and even though I don't drink wine, I found myself being drawn in. The wild descriptions of the wine make it all worthwhile, but the characters really start to grow on you, too. It's a real shame we won't get any more of the series, but it's totally worth getting what is out now. On a related note... Bridget Alverson of Good Reader interviewed Ed Chavez of Vertical about their new digital initiative. He is very straightforward with what they are doing and what they expect from their digital sales. Here's a hint. It's not a lot. But the fact that they have taken the step is great and that we might see more of their backlist is encouraging. Would it be too much to dare to hope for some Tezuka titles like Blackjack to come out this way? More on the J-Manga shutdown. As I said in my look at J-Manga's sudden shutdown, the analysis of the reasons why would be looked at for weeks. Asahi Shimbun added its two cents with a short article on the shutdown, citing most of the usual reasons and adding a small tidbit of their own. To quote, But critics pointed out from the beginning that the prices were rather high and the website was not offering many popular titles. In many cases, manga titles that have already established large fan bases outside Japan have been licensed to local publishers and other companies. For that reason, J-Manga had been in competition with digital manga streaming services offered by other companies and has been struggling to make a profit. It was also revealed recently that Bitway Co., which operates J-Manga Inc., decided to forge a merger with e-book company BookLive Co. Could the merger of Bitway with BookLive have been a contributor to the shutdown? It probably played a factor to be sure, but how much, we don't know. Another question this raises is, will the lessons learned from J-Manga get applied in the new merger, and does this leave open the possibility of another site like J-Manga? I hope so. J-Manga had a lot to offer. Manga at WonderCon. Last year, we went to WonderCon Anaheim and had a great time. It was like San Diego had been in the 90s, not crowded or filled with other media, and had a good mix of vendors in the exhibition hall. There had been two booths last year that had older manga for $5. I was really looking forward to finding these people again. I had discovered some older titles recently and had wanted to try and find some volumes at a good price. Imagine my disappointment when I saw that not only were these vendors not there, there was practically no manga presence on the floor. This media, which had had a booth at least, didn't this time, and there were no vendors that had manga except for two, which only had Dark Horse manga which wasn't what I was really looking for. It was such a disappointment. I'm glad that WonderCon is primarily a comic con, but aren't manga comics too? Manga, it's Sakura Con. While I was at WonderCon, Sakura Con in Washington State was going on and getting a lot more attention. Viz had already made their big licensing announcements over Valentine's Day in February. Yen Press and Dark Horse had new licenses to announce. I was really underwhelmed by them, to be honest. Yen Press announced three titles. Inu Boku's Secret Service, No Matter How I Look at It, It's Your Guys' Fault I'm Not Popular, and Wolf Children, Ame and Yuki. The first two do not sound interesting at all. Wolf Children had my attention, though. I'd been hearing a lot of good things about the movie, and this manga will be in an adaptation of it. Dark Horse announced the sequel to Lone Wolf and Cove. Big surprise there, right? They also announced Hatsune Miku, 
unofficial Hatsune mix. Hatsune Miku is a Vocaloid that has gained a lot of popularity, to the point of being cosplayed at places like WonderCon. I don't get the whole Vocaloid phenomena, so I can't say this excites me either. Well, not announced at SakuraCon, Seven Seas had some good news, bad news. Good news was a new license. Senran Kagura, Skirting Shadows. It's about a group of teenage girls who go to a secret ninja high school. Yeah, sounds like a typical Seven Seas title. The bad news was that they wouldn't be releasing any new volumes of Blood Alone. This really disappoints me. I really enjoyed the series and was looking forward to new volumes. But the move of the title to Kodansha pretty much means that Seven Seas has lost it. And the probability of Kodansha continuing in the U.S. is close to nil. This was the second release of the title, and it's not a big seller, so I don't see Kodansha investing any more time into it. They might be willing to license it back to Seven Seas, but again, I just don't see that happening, or at a price that Seven Seas could afford. Bad viz. No cookie for you. Related to the Vertical Goes Digital story, I've spent a lot of time criticizing Viz Media for its lack of support of its manga app on 10-inch Android devices. Every time I would go to the Google Play Store and check the app, I would see the dreaded Not Compatible with Your Acer Iconia 500 message. After I heard about the new Vertical Digital Manga, I decided to do a search for Viz Digital Manga on Amazon to see if I could read any that way. The first hit for Viz Media in the digital store was their manga app. I clicked the link expecting to see the same message as I did on the Google Play site and was surprised to see there it was compatible. I've downloaded it for my tablet and it seems to work fine. I can finally read my Viz manga on the go and can commit to buying more since I'm not restricted to having internet access to read it. Now, here's my big problem. Why hasn't Viz told this to anyone? If I hadn't set up my tablet to download from sites other than Google Play and gotten the Amazon app, this wouldn't have been possible, and I would still be angry and bitter about the whole thing. This doesn't vindicate Viz in any way either, since I just stumbled upon it. It shouldn't matter where I get the app. It should be compatible with my device whether it came from Google or Amazon. Apparently that is not the case. And claiming to tell people that it's on Kindle is not the same as saying it can be loaded on Android 10-inch devices. Kindle does not equal Acer or Asus. Get the word out, Viz. Stop deliberately limiting your audience. Manga I've read lately. I've been kind of distracted lately, so I haven't read a lot of manga, but I have worked through a couple of Yen Press titles and Vertical titles. I read the second volume of Until Death Do Us Part. The volume was mostly one long battle, which is kind of sad since it's a two-volume omnibus and was boring to boot. I'm still not impressed with it. Umi Neko, When They Cry, Volume 1, surprised me with how much I enjoyed it. I had mixed feelings over Higurashi when they cry, so I didn't know if I would like this new series, but I loved it. It's very much in the vein of the old murder mysteries or dark house horror films of the 30s and 40s, and I love those kinds of stories. I can't wait to read the next one. Over at Vertical, I read the first volume of Knights of Sidonia. This was another good sci-fi title. Vertical has been good at finding these. The first volume sets the story up with lots of questions that I want to find answers to. There's also a talking bear. What else do you need? Finally, I read the last volume of Paradise Kiss. This was a fantastic series, and I'm so glad Vertical rescued it. I heard on Twitter a lot of people were disappointed with Yukari's choice at the end, but I think it was the right one. I don't want to spoil anything, so I can't really go into what it was or why I thought it was the best. I'll just say, go read it and then email or message me on Twitter, and I'll be glad to tell you why. Thank you for listening to the Manga Xanadu Manga Dome podcast. You can find links to the stories and books discussed here in the show notes at manga.jdragononline.com. You can email me with any questions at xanadu at jdragononline.com or leave a comment on this post. Rate me on YouTube and follow me on Twitter at mangazanadu, all one word. Until next time, farewell from the Manga Dome.